The most dangerous part of space flight is leaving Earth, the launch. The second most dangerous part is when a spacecraft has to decelerate and survive the fiery heat of reentry while returning to Earth. Objects coming back from space are traveling at many times Mach speed, faster than the speed of sound, and as they do, they're compressing the air in front of them. As a result, all could be burned up as fireballs. But when asked about his descent from outer space, veteran astronaut Scott Horowitz said, It's very smooth and there's no real sudden onset or force or G's that you feel. You'll notice, looking out the window, the sky starts to turn a different color. It turns kind of a light pinkish color, and then it gets kind of a deeper pinkish red. And then it turns red and orange. And what you realize is you're looking from the inside of a fireball outward. You're inside the air that's being ripped apart as you're re-entering the atmosphere. Very little feeling, no shaking, no vibration, but you just see the heat that's being generated by the space shuttle entering the atmosphere. All of this thanks to the use of a thermal protection system, or TPS. The system may not be the most glamorous feature in a space plane, but it is one of the backbones of every mission and can lead to the difference between a safe reentry and total catastrophe. The TPS plays a crucial role in protecting our spaceships, as well as astronauts, from aerodynamic heating and the heat of the sun. And of course, the same is true for space planes. Special mention must be made of the Dream Chaser, a reusable space plane currently under development by Sierra Nevada Corporation, SNC. Dream Chaser was selected by NASA to provide cargo delivery, return, and disposal service for the space station under the Commercial Resupply Service CRS-2 contract. It will provide a minimum of six cargo missions to and from the space station, carrying critical supplies like food, water, and science experiments, and return to Earth with a gentle runway land. Dream Chaser can gently return critical cargo at less than 1.5 Gs. The vehicle is designed for high reusability, reducing overall cost and a quick turnaround between missions. The ability to launch on top of multiple launch vehicles and land at a variety of approved runways makes Dream Chaser a flexible option for reliable transportation. As it prepares for its first journey in just a few short months, all eyes are focused on the intricate heat shield that covers almost the entire space plane. The TPS comprises a coating made of various heat-resistant materials capable of withstanding temperatures of up to 1,650 degrees Celsius 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. In the case of both the Space Shuttle Orbiter and Dream Chaser, this represents a sophisticated protection system consisting of fiberglass-based tiles and thermal protective blankets perfectly fitted to safeguard the space plane. In addition to protecting the vehicle during re-entry, it also helps normalize the temperature inside the spacecraft when exposed to direct sunlight. Temperatures can reach up to 120 degrees Celsius 250 degrees Fahrenheit during the day in orbit. These tiles can aid in maintaining a stable temperature for experiments and ultimately for humans inside. Notably, Dream Chaser incorporates a few areas without tiles due to the presence of thrusters. Sierra Space recently highlighted the challenges faced by Dream Chaser's forward dome thrusters, which will encounter some of the highest temperatures during re-entry. These thrusters, integral for guiding Dream Chaser during docking with the space station, work in conjunction with the tiles to withstand the formidable heat and forces during re-entry. Dubbed a mini space shuttle, Dream Chaser takes pride in its compact size, a standout feature that sets it apart in the realm of space exploration. Therefore, Dream Chaser has about 2,000 TPS tiles compared to the 24,000 tiles used on the space shuttle. These tiles seamlessly wrap around the vehicle, covering its sides, top, bottom, and various control surfaces. Recent images showcase the intricate progress of this purpose, emphasizing the importance of each tile's precise fit to the unique and rounded body of Dream Chaser. Although Dream Chaser requires fewer tiles due to its smaller size, the tiles themselves are larger. Dream Chaser's tiles are approximately 10 by 10 inches, while the tiles used on the space shuttle were about 6 by 6 inches. This allows for the use of fewer tiles overall and helps meet all micrometeoroid orbital debris requirements to ensure the integrity of the TPS for cargo transport, landing, and safe runway landings, as well as potential crew missions.
On Dream Chaser, it has two areas in black and white. Sierra Space states the main difference between these two types is a special additive for the outer coating layer. The white tiles, strategically positioned, serve as effective reflectors, deflecting a significant portion of the sun's heat away from the Dream Chaser while in orbit. This intelligent distribution helps in keeping the components within the space plane cooler, contributing to the overall thermal regulations of the space plane. Conversely, the black tiles interspersed absorb and dissipate heat during re-entry, providing a defense against the intense forces and temperatures encountered in the Earth's atmosphere. The location of these tiles is carefully determined by the space plane's design. By placing the tiles on specific areas of the vehicle, engineers have created an optimized system for managing heat, reducing the strain on components, and enhancing the overall efficiency of Dream Chaser's thermal protection. This is a smart choice that balances the aesthetic appeal with technical precision. Moreover, the tiles on Dream Chaser use room temperature vulcanizing silicone, RTV, to ensure that each tile remains bonded to the vehicle. Silicone material can withstand higher temperatures, making it ideal for use in this context. Each tile undergoes individual pull testing to prevent issues such as tile detachment, a problem that occurred early in the space shuttle program. When workers first attempted to ferry the Space Shuttle Columbia to the Kennedy Space Center in 1979 atop the back of a 747, hundreds of TPS tiles fell off the space plane during the initial stages of the flight, simply due to aerodynamic forces and airflow. Had this happened during launch instead of the ferry flight, it could have led to catastrophic consequences for Columbia and its two-person crew. Indeed, when Columbia embarked on the historic STS-1 mission on April 12, 1981, a few TPS tiles unexpectedly dislodged during launch. Fortunately, the absent tiles were located in areas of the space plane that could withstand atmospheric re-entry even without them. Sierra Nevada, drawing from the 30-year, 135-flight legacy of the shuttle program and its TPS bonding best practices, has seamlessly integrated these lessons into the development of Dream Chaser. Leveraging the invaluable insights gained from the shuttle's extensive history, Sierra Nevada engineers have undertaken a comprehensive update of Dream Chaser's TPS tiles. In a significant milestone in 2015, SNC successfully concluded crucial TPS material development tests for the Dream Chaser space plane. These tests, conducted at NASA's Ames Research Center and Johnson Space Center through reimmersible Space Act agreements, provided indispensable data supporting the TPS subsystem's critical design review and validating the manufacturing readiness of Dream Chaser's TPS. The comprehensive testing program included over 100 arcjet cycles and radiant heat tests at Johnson's Radiant Heat Test Facility and Ames's Aerodynamic Heating Facility. These tests not only supported the thermal characterization of the development TPS materials, but also contributed vital information for thermal modeling analysis and TPS sizing. The subsequent AHF ArcJet tests, emulating conditions akin to Dream Chaser's environment, further solidified SNC's confidence in certifying the manufacturing capability of the high-temperature material known as Tufrock. Highlighting their commitment to safety, the former corporate vice president of SNC Space Systems, Mark N. Serangelo, emphasized the importance of collaborating with NASA institutions like Johnson and Ames, leveraging their infrastructure, materials, and expertise to refine and customize Dream Chaser's TPS. The result is a TPS that is not only lighter, stronger, and more efficient than previous generations, but also one that surpasses all mission requirements. Looking ahead to its first launch, Dream Chaser Tenacity, a cargo vehicle, is scheduled for a potential liftoff in early 2024 via the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket. The final testing of the test article, a crucial step before flight readiness, is nearing completion. Sierra Space's dedication to innovation is underscored by the numerous advancements implemented in the space plane, all of which will face the ultimate test in a real flight environment. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.